Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. We have made it to Florence where I will be spending a few days seeing some of the most famous pieces of art and architecture from the last 600 years or so alongside some contemporary art as well which I will be putting in the beginning of the video in case you came here just to see that and then you can drop off after or stick around. We're gonna start the day with some breakfast, but the first thing that you will notice here that we definitely do not have in the United States is, are these beautiful sort of stone vaulted ceilings. And this is a very common characteristic of many shops and restaurants in Florence. So our first stop of the day is actually to see two contemporary artists whose work I enjoy so much, Cecily Brown and Nathaniel Mary Quinn. And this is the Museo Novecento, which is a museum dedicated to the Italian art of the 20th and 21st century, but they also have temporary exhibitions, which is what we're going to see today. We're going to start with Cecily Brown's exhibit and all of the works in this show were inspired by Renaissance images of the temptations of St. Anthony. So there's about 30 works in total. There are the oil on canvas paintings like we see here, as well as some works on paper. This scene of St. Anthony being tempted in the desert by various demons is something that's been captured many times throughout art history. A great example is the work of the German artist Martin Schongauer, who created a really famous engraving depicting this that Michelangelo actually copied years later. We were told that the Nathaniel Mary Quinn works are upstairs and they're in this museum as well as the Museo Stefano Bardi, which unfortunately we didn't have the chance to go to. But Quinn is really known for his distorted portraiture, which they featured alongside works from Italian Renaissance artists. And there were just two of them, but they were two great works.
We're now going to see some of the more historical sites, starting with the Basilica di San Lorenzo, which is one of the largest churches in Florence, next to the Florence Cathedral, of course, which is home to the famous Duomo. On the outside, the church looks very unassuming, very subtle, you know, not a lot of ornamentation, but on the inside, it is incredible. Many members of the Medici family are buried here, and you can actually spot their crest in a lot of places throughout the church, but especially in the ceiling. This is one of two pulpits that Donatello created for the Basilica. One was dedicated to Christ's passion and the other to the resurrection. This is where Cosimo de' Medici is buried, which if you're not familiar with him, he was really the Medici that established their family as the rulers of Florence all throughout the Renaissance. He was a huge patron of the arts and is the reason that most of the famous artworks we see today exist, such as Donatello's David. And this is the most interesting thing. It is estimated that he spent upwards of what today would be $500 million on art and culture. It's now a little bit later because we actually couldn't get tickets to see Michelangelo's David at the Galleria dell'Accademia until 9 o'clock at night. So I highly advise if you're traveling to Florence, booking your tickets for all of the attractions well in advance. I had no idea how difficult it would be to see things during the time that we wanted. And here we are. This is Michelangelo's David, which sounds a bit silly, but it's so much larger than I thought it was going to be in person. It is 17 feet tall, made entirely of marble, and it's exquisite. It's a new day, and we're going to head across the Ponte Vecchio Bridge to go to the Pitti Palace. This place is incredible. The scale is unreal. The Medici family lived here for the majority of the time. They bought it in 1549, and it's where they kept their extensive art collection. Some of that's still here. A lot of it's been moved to other museums throughout the city, such as the Uffizi. Napoleon also actually lived here in the late 18th century, and now it is a museum. It's also just a little preview. Honestly, the rooms go on and on and on. This place is absolutely massive. I think we spent at least an hour and a half on the inside before seeing the gardens, which are equally as large. This is the famous Florence Cathedral, and at first I thought from far away that the facade was painted all of these different colors, but it's actually composed of green, pink, and white marble, which is extraordinary. The church has many different parts, and this is the Baptistry of St. John.
this is the very top of the bell tower, which was quite a hike, but you get the most beautiful views of Florence from up here, as well as of the Duomo itself, which we will be climbing as well shortly. So to get to the top of the Duomo, you have to climb hundreds of these tiny stone steps. It is quite intense, and if you're claustrophobic, probably not for you. You get a little bit of reprieve at this one area where you can look up and see the beautiful paintings on the inside of the dome, as well as down. They actually had a service going on while we were there, which was quite beautiful. So we're actually taking stairs that are inside of the Duomo, which is crazy, <laughs> to get to the very, very top where you can see out over everything. This is one of my favorite restaurants from the whole trip. Honestly, it's incredible. It is right across from the Pitti Palace, which is where we were earlier. And this is their flight of Chiantis, where I was able to try different Chiantis, one from 2019, one from 1980, and one from 1975, all from vineyards that the restaurant has relationships with. In fact, this whole restaurant, honestly, is kind of like a wine library, just with the setup and stuff. So if you're into wine, you will definitely like this place. And the food was fantastic as well. And that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of a different setting. Next week, I will be back in New York and I will see you all in that video.